Deathloop, this PlayStation 5 and PC exclusive shooter from Arcane, an immersive sim has just released, and here we are covering it on the PlayStation 5, and I'm joined today to talk about this excellent game from Arcane with my friend and colleague John Lindman. How are you doing there, John? I'm doing wonderful. It's a new uh, week for a new Arcane game. And I'm always ready for that. I've been playing it as well. I think you've spent even more time with it. Uh, there's a lot to say, so let's get into it, shall we? Let's just really quickly, before we get into the technical aspects of this video, describe a bit about what type of a game Deathloop is, because I think it's hard to kind of sum up exactly what this type of game is. And I think you have to have a good understanding of what type of games Arcane generally makes. Here, I see this game as an immersive sim style game, where you have an objective in a rather freeform designed level. It's constructed strained though it's not open world. There's a number of secrets, there's a number of varying paths to complete your objective. You have gadgets and weapons that allow for stealth or pure action. The way the story works out in this game is that you will end up playing the areas, like the various missions they have, multiple times at different times of day, which could change things like enemy placement or your exact objective. You're getting a more, I would say, streamlined immersive sim package that focuses perhaps a tiny bit more on action combat than games we've seen from Arcane in the past. Uh, but it's still very freeform and super enjoyable to play. What do you think there, John? Yeah, I tend to agree. I mean, obviously, I'm happy that they're still making immersive sims. And I was initially concerned with the reveal of what this game was going to be. Same. That it wasn't going to be that. But thankfully, it absolutely is. And yeah, the main focus is beautiful, interesting level design with a lot of intricacies to explore many different paths and places to go and it just it sort of rewards and pushes you to want to explore that world and find different ways through it but what I like about it is so they did the the moon crash thing DLC I guess for Prey mm -hmm. which was also kind of a roguelike thing and obviously this is a different arcane this is arcane in Lyon it has a similar type of approach and I think it's clever because rather than save scumming your way through the game <laughs> it essentially sort of pushes you to learn the maps well right it does you can die a couple times like I think you said with the rewinding thing it basically means so you can't make a mistake and immediately like full failure which is good but it's like a little slap on the wrist you have to be careful from there because when you do die and you have to redo it you know you lose everything that you picked up i like it I, th I think it pushes you to play the game better and see more of the world and find that optimal route through it uh, so it's a really interesting take on uh, both immersive sim and roguelike together and yeah i'm a bit i'm a big fan of that it's an interesting way to solve the whole uh save scumming problem which is basically yeah. you can save at any single moment in a game some people really like it some people don't some people think it takes away the challenge. I think this is a great way to solve it. And also, I think it emphasizes a bit more um, in the moment uh, gameplay where if you do mess up yourself, you can start shooting and not feeling so bad because you, it's not like you could just go you know, load up an old save and start stealthing again. You know, you have to kind of roll yeah. with it. And it does make the game a bit faster. And a big part of that, one thing I also want to praise really quickly is just, I think this has some of the better combat that I've seen in an arcane game in a while in terms of shooting. Big time. Know, like the guns feel really snappy and the animation is nice and all those things that I really like in a first person shooter. It's also hyper violent <laughs> to say the least. Like you could shoot off people's legs and arms arms and heads then they just like pop it's it's pretty intense uh so that's another thing to know when you get into this game so on top of that i would also say the storytelling is top notch i'm kind of finding it a little bit more compelling uh than like say dishonored i mean prey had an awesome story but i thought dishonored i love those games but the storytelling was a little bit flat at times whereas here like they do a good job of setting up you know the different characters and i you know i really got into that and obviously then there's that online mode that allows the game to be invaded by a female counterpart controlled by other online players. And this is cool. I haven't played around with it too much, but the first thing I thought about was um, The Crossing. 2007 era game that Arcane had been working on but was cancelled and that was also one of the first games I can think of where the idea was that you played a single player story driven game but some players in the world could be controlled by multiplayer basically online characters that would try to take you out or protect you or it was an interesting idea of sort of combining single player and multiplayer before even we had like the Dark Souls invasions but that was cancelled unfortunately so in a way it feels like they're getting back to that original concept Concept here and it seems uh, really well designed and a lot of other aspects of the game are also well designed so on a technical level I'm gonna say this game uh, at least in its base default mode without ray tracing we'll talk about the modes uh, really shortly but in its base default you know performance mode 
with the normal visuals. I don't think it's doing anything particularly technically super interesting, but it's just very well polished. You have this uh, great kind of 1960s inspired visual design with a lot of your arcane style levels with a lot of knickknacks here and there on the ground. Great usage of parallax mapping for a lot of the terrain textures, for example. And I think like I described earlier, the first person experiences uh, quite a bit better than we've seen in other arcane experiences. Uh, for example, I really like just little details in the weapon. Like when you go up and down the stairs and you have like, uh, uh, let's say the LIMP, the light infantry machine pistol that your character makes a joke about um <laughs> when you go and up and down the stairs the folding stock on it actually bounces up and down with each stair step and usually yeah. in games it's not actually done that way it's usually done in some sort of like canned animation way that uh, doesn't look too great but this is actually like a physics thing another thing i really liked is the usage of per object blur for the first time in an arcane game yes uh, it really adds the animation uh, gives them extra weight and style that I really like. And one last thing, just cause I have to mention it, and we don't see it too often in games these days, but when you reload your weapon, uh, and if you like pause the frame here, you can see that the entire forward um, things into the distance uh, get blended out in depth of field. And that's something I saw back in the day with the original black and no games have really done it since. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's a callback, I don't know, but it, it definitely adds visual flair to the game. And it's good looking, nothing particularly awesome, but just, you know, well polished. I really like how polished the game feels and they did a great job there. So so Alex, then I want to start by asking you, what's your favorite mode in the game? It's going to be performance mode. This mode essentially targets 4K. It does not necessarily hit 4K, but it is constantly dynamically scaling the resolution to hit 60 frames per second. And I think 60 frames per second in a first person shooter or an immersive sim is almost something you really, really want. So I find this mode the best suited for the game. While playing the game, I noticed uh, while doing resolution counts that your average resolution, uh, let's say on any given level, when you're actually, you know, looking at objects of detail or engaging in combat will be around anywhere from 1296p to 1440p. And it'll stay generally in that range. It can technically go lower uh, when something really uh, is really expensive for some reason, or it can also go technically go higher to like around 1620p ish or so. Like if you look at the sky or anything else, it can actually go higher. Um, but generally it is not that. It doesn't look very 4K like, but it is all about hitting that 60 FPS, which, which we'll talk about later, but let's just say it hits it very well. So it sounds like they basically set the minimum at like what, 50% scale or so? That's what it seems like, yeah. Allows it to go up and down as necessary in order to hit the target. Uh, but then there's another mode that seems to be mostly identical except for that they set a minimum scale and that's the visual quality mode so what did you find there interestingly it lines up with an option on the pc uh the pc also has a dynamic resolution scaler uh and on pc you can set it to minimum scale of 0.85 on the axis that would be a minimum resolution of 1836p uh the thing is based upon the performance mode that we saw earlier the visual quality mode doesn't change any of the other graphical settings except for this minimum resolution it can drop to. And based upon the performance of that performance mode that I was just talking about, how it's dropping down to like 1296p or 1440p to keep the frame rate up, you can imagine that this visual quality mode is constantly at 1836p because it's trying to get to 60 FPS, uh, but it has a limit of this minimum of 1836p. A benefit of this, I guess, is that technically you don't see the resolution scaling as often, but that will have an obvious impact on performance that we'll talk about later. I, in general, think this mode does look pretty clear. The performance mode doesn't look very 4K-like, but the visual quality mode, since it's so close to 4K, you know, 1836p, and this game appears to be using FSR, at that 0.85 axis scale of 4K actually looks 4K enough, especially on a 4K display at a normal distance. It is a very, I would say, clean looking mode. And that's its main benefit, but we'll talk about performance later. I was going to say, that sounds like this is a good mode for VRR if that yeah, ever for sure. becomes available. <laughs> so then the last mode one, and I think it says a lot that this was not your favorite mode. It's the ray tracing mode. Uh, so what does this add in terms of ray tracing features? And well, I guess we'll... We'll get to the reasons otherwise when we talk about performance. So yeah, tell us about this. So this mode targets a frame rate of 30 FPS with an output resolution of 4K. It's technically dynamic. So you will see a number of scenes while just playing the game. You can see resolution shifting. You can see resolution shifts in this game in a weird way where like the screen just like a small jitter and it looks a little bit blurrier. The lowest resolution I could find in ray tracing mode was around 1836p. 
Uh, so that 0.85 axis res scale. It may go lower, but I didn't count any. What it adds, though, is very interesting. It adds ray trace sun shadows, which, you know, they do that usual thing you're used to seeing in games with ray trace shadows where you don't have uh, things like aliasing pixel edges from shadows from the sun. But a really interesting thing about these ray trace sun shadows is that the first mission shows it off dramatically, like you see here, where if you look, the game looks completely different with ray trace shadows in this one scene. And that's because the uh, normal rasterized shadows here are so low, like the sun source is so low to the horizon, aliasing issues with shadow mapping causes the scene to not have the proper shadows it's supposed to actually have based upon the sun's angle with the ground. It's a strange artifact. It happens in games with shadow maps. It shows off just how I think actually they designed this game around having ray tracing on for the sun shadows at least which is pretty interesting actually i usually don't see that so the other thing that is added in is ray traced ambient occlusion and this one has a more dramatic effect in other scenes in the game like the ray traced sun shadows are nice but they don't add a whole lot always to every single scene the ray traced ambient occlusion though you know like here if you look in this scene yeah. it's like it's floating it without ray tracing on it's just using the game's kind of standard uh, screen space ambient occlusion. Uh, we turn on ray tracing and that object is much more grounded. Same with this shot here where we look at these boxes here where they're kind of like glowing uh, without ray tracing on and then all of a sudden you add in this ray tracing ambient occlusion from the ray tracing mode and you see them connecting with the ground and each other. It looks like you know they're maybe being lit from the sky above but the ambient occlusion is grounding them to the objects nearby and to the ground and it looks just to say a lot lot better um the only you know negative here is of course that you have to play the game at 30 fps if you turn on this mode which i think this game i think it benefits most uh from 60 uh so it is a little bit of a shame that there isn't a lower resolution ray tracing uh, mode available, but so it is, you know. If there was a higher performance ray tracing mode, I'd imagine it would be like sub 1080p even based on what we're seeing here. We should talk about performance next. And I kind of want to start by just mentioning about performance mode because this is the only mode that I've personally used because I've just been playing the game while you've been doing the actual data gathering for this video. Uh, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but my experience was that it was almost a completely locked 60 frames per second. Is that about right? <laughs> you got it. I mean, it's uh, this is the way I wanted to play the game after I initially, you know, started up and started trying out the modes. I immediately saw that performance mode was the one for me. It plays the game at a near flawless 60 FPS, doing almost anything, sneaking around, engaging in all the hardcore combat that you've seen in this video so far, cutscenes, etc. You're going to be getting 60. It's great. It feels wonderful, fluid on the game pad. Uh, there's only like small things that can happen. For some reason, when you interact with uh, like keypads, there's a stutter that happens, but you don't really notice it, to be honest with you, because the camera is already locked in place anyway. Another thing that it had happened, but I don't think many people will get this, it seemed like a random one-off thing that I could not reproduce, is the first time I played the Updown mission, I was leaving the flat and I got massive stutters, like huge fluctuations in frame rate, uh, that then went away. I could never reproduce that again in this mode, so... Maybe it was just a one-off thing, but if it does happen to you, no, you're not alone at least. Uh, but in general, Flawless 60, amazing mode. Everyone should play this way in my humble opinion because the other modes, unfortunately, uh, do not perform as well. Quality mode then, that doesn't sound great based on what you've explained so far, but what what's the average level of performance here? It's essentially always going to be running below 60 FPS. I would say eight times out of 10, whatever you're doing is gonna be below 60 FPS. The PS5 doesn't support VRR at the moment, so this mode doesn't feel too great as a result. If it did in the future, this mode would be a bit better. Let's just say you're, you know, getting into combat. Yeah, that's gonna be around 50 to 55 FPS. Uh, the more intense scenes will be dropping into the 40s. Its minimum resolution is too high to be hitting 60 rather often. So the only times when you're hitting 60 are like when you're looking at the sky, looking at some boxes on the ground, looking at the ground, uh, looking at something that isn't actually very intensive. Other than that, it's going to usually be in the 50s. And I think with, you know, V-Sync on normal displays, I don't think it looks very good. And I don't think this is a very playable way to play the game, especially when it drops into the 40s. Uh, I don't think that feels very good on the controller. The RT mode, on the other hand, uh, technically it is hitting 30 FPS almost all the time. And that is great. But the only problem is, is that the game has terrible frame pacing while hitting that 30 FPS. It's our... Our greatest foe, John, yes, is back. Yes, improper frame pacing, yep. This is, uh, <laughs> it continues to haunt us. 
all the way from Bloodborne to Deathloop, it's it's there. It's strange though that it's happening because I don't think this has happened too often in arcade games in the past. So however they're capping FPS here is probably doing it. I mean, this should be completely fixable. That's the thing. Uh, so yes, hopefully they will see this maybe and actually realize, oh, okay, there is a problem there that needs to be addressed. Because honestly, right now, this mode, looking at your results, it's not, not very useful. It's essentially every five to 10 seconds. Uh, there can be also, you know, like every 20 seconds. It depends, essentially. I don't know what's causing it when it does, but it can be happening rather often where maybe four to seven frames that are at 50 milliseconds and then a number of 16.6 .6 millisecond frames mixed in there as well. You don't necessarily feel those 16.6 .6 millisecond ones. That's not the biggest problem, but all those ones that are dropping to 50, they make the fluid motion that 30 FPS can have with motion blur not feel very fluid. And it doesn't feel well on the controller as well when you turn, for example. I think this is 100% fixable. Just looking at the PC version, there's a frame rate cap there that's 30 FPS and it's flawless actually. So I think they can do it very easily, but at the moment right now, in spite of that really nice visual benefit that the RT mode has, I don't think it's currently very playable at 30 FPS due to this frame pacing issue. That's kind of the lay of the land, and it seems like playing in performance mode is currently the best option. For sure. Uh, especially if you can turn on black frame insertion, because it looks really good in this <laughs> game, I gotta say. it's Do it! It just looks excellent. Yeah. I think both of us kind of agree that this is a pretty solid game. It's a really interesting take on the genre, and the PS5 version is solid. Yeah, that's exactly the way I put it. I think, you know, Arcane makes games that we on the channel really like they emphasize yes. design interesting concepts and thought and the fact that the playstation 5 serves up such a great version in the areas that i really care about in first person games you know like 60 fps fluid animations good looking environments and all those things immersive you know feel it all it does that all well ps5 version is great in that performance mode it's just you know let's hope based upon this video that arcane can fix the uh, ray tracing modes 30 fps to have proper fame pacing but john Thank you so much for joining me and talking to me about Deathloop. Glad I could help. And if you did like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, then hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to help us out and see more content like this in the future, support us on Patreon to get years worth of our content available in high quality for download. Follow John and myself on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex bidding you farewell and a feet of I just dropped myself. What kind of the world is this? Ah!